The Mandalorian Chapter 13 was everything we ever dreamed of, and it came with so much new information, so let's jump in and talk about the Jedi finally arriving. The Mandalorian here, and I have a question for you. What episode of The Mandalorian has been your favorite, and why is it so obviously Chapter 13? We are about to dive into the latest episode with full spoilers, Easter eggs, and the zillions of ties to the prequel trilogies, Clone Wars, and Rebels. So buckle up, because this recap to the rescue is about to be epic. Holy and sh**! We start right there on Ahsoka! I wasn't kidding! This is epic! She's terrifyingly awesome, slicing down some enemies through this foggy, barren forest on the planet Corvus. She disappears, she reappears, everybody's dying. She's played by Rosario Dawson for live action, which gives me mixed feelings because my heart kind of breaks for Ashley Eckstein, who voiced the character for years and didn't get to play the live action version, especially after Katie Sackhoff got to do both the animated voice of bo and the live action version in Mandalorian. But Rosario does such such a great job of Ahsoka, it's impossible not to love her here, so props to both of them for getting the character right. We have a real Game of Thrones feeling standoff at the gates of Kaladin with Ahsoka setting an ultimatum for the Magistrate, and boom, we're off to space with Mando and Baby Yoda. The child uses the Force to get his favorite little knob toy, showing us that he's getting a little bit more confident using the Force because now he's literally unscrewing the thing instead of just pulling it towards him like his classmate Snacks. In Kaladin, people are literally silenced by Magistrate Morgan Elsbeth, and Mando is led straight to her. Long story short, she sucks, but she has a spear made of Beskar, which almost makes her request of killing Ahsoka tempting. On his way out of Kaladin, a convoy is seen on the top left corner of the screen perched in a tree. This owl-like creature is Morai, a piece of the gods of Mortis, which has been with Ahsoka ever since she was resurrected on Mortis. Mando meets Ahsoka in the woods, and they have a really epic duel for a moment, and they're a good match for each other because Mandalorians literally designed their armor to combat Jedi. But a name drop of Bo-Katan essentially saves Mando's life, and Ahsoka is quick to recognize the child and that he looks like Yoda. Am I the only one who got pretty geeked out when she just name dropped Yoda? It was cool to hear his name. I've only known one other being like this, a wise Jedi master named Yoda. Mando tells Ahsoka that the Magistrate has HK-47 battle droids, which are known from the Knights of the Old Republic video game, and that the soldiers there have A350 rifles, which are from the same A300 line of guns we saw used in Rogue One and Solo, a Star Wars story. If you think that shows it's all connected, just wait till I tell you that Ahsoka outright references Anakin Skywalker when she refuses to train the child because of the darkness in him. The sort of emotional attachment that the child has to Mando can lead to a downfall. His anger. All the more reason to train him. No. I've seen what such feelings can do to a fully trained Jedi Knight. To the best of us. AKA Anakin Skywalker, AKA Darth Vader, and Ahsoka saw this up close because when she was a rambunctious little youngling, she was Anakin's Padawan. Also, is Baby Yoda purring at one point? Oh, and by the way, yeah, no big deal, I should probably mention this, but we know the child's name now! Ahsoka reveals his name is Grogu, which certainly isn't the Nigel name that Taika Waititi claimed it was on Twitter once upon a time. Personally, I don't care. I'm still calling him Baby Yoda, and you can't stop me. The prequel ties are strong in this one because Ahsoka points out that Grogu escaped the massacre of the younglings by being abducted while Anakin slaughtered all the kids. Or maybe Baby Yoda was just like, eh, all this dying stuff ain't for me. I'm just gonna slide on out of here. But somebody seems to have taken him away from there, and we don't know who yet. Leave your suspicions in the comments. Also, while Ahsoka was explaining all of the Force power stuff to Mando, she tells him the Force is an energy field created by all living things. This is just like what Obi-Wan told Luke in A New Hope, so that's cool. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, and penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. During his Force test with Ahsoka, Baby Yoda summons his favorite little gear knob using the Force. Mando is the ultimate proud dad, but there's not much time for Sellies. Mando and Ahsoka are teaming up to take on the Magistrate, which Mando thinks should come as a surprise given the Mandalorian and Jedi rivalry, but Ahsoka has teamed up with other Mandalorians in the past on the animated shows, so this isn't really anything new for her. They go to take down Morgan Elsbeth, and a little backstory on her. Her people were massacred during the Clone Wars, and she built her own business in trading weapons and resources, which ultimately helped build the Imperial Starfleet. Like I said in the beginning, she sucks. Ahsoka slices through more henchmen, begging the question of how many trees and other objects have to die so that Disney Plus can stop us from watching this violence in the raw. At one point, Ahsoka lines up her lightsabers to look like one single beam, and that's more than just cool. It's a reference to the time she showed off that same move when she fought her former master Darth Vader in animated form. Nowadays, she's really no one's master and doesn't have a master because she left the Jedi after being framed and ultimately doesn't
doesn't really identify as a Jedi or a Sith. During the action in Kaladin, we do see a Loth Cat, a creature created by Clone Wars and Rebels genius Dave Filoni. Cool reference. There's a samurai fight. It is awesome. I suggest watching it again on the show just for your own entertainment. And a good old-fashioned standoff with Mando and the head of Elsbeth Security, a face that might look familiar to you because that is Michael Bean, who played Kyle Reese in the OG Terminator movie. But after a little pew-pew, he ain't gonna be in Chapter 14. The last big reveal is that Ahsoka is looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn. Remember when I said Elsbeth sucks? Well, Thrawn really sucks. He's a big bad blue guy who rose to power after the fall of the Empire and also helped build up the First Order, which might further that one theory from last week where that blue tank could be creating Snoke for the sequel trilogy or recreating Palpatine because that was never even remotely explained. Thrawn is a worthy opponent for the Jedi and Mandalorians because he has studied them so thoroughly. He was given the rank of Grand Admiral by Palpatine himself, and he was last seen with Ahsoka's friend Ezra at the end of Rebels. That might explain why she's looking for Thrawn because she wants to find Ezra, and my guess is that's a Star Wars story for another spin-off show. Mando has fulfilled yet another side quest that unlocks the Beskar spear weapon as a new weapon going forward. This show really plays like a video game. It looks like he's going to say goodbye to Grogu and my emotions run higher than Wiz Khalifa on April 20th, but Ahsoka won't take him. She sends Mando and the baby to Tython, that's the origin of the Jedi in some of the Star Wars Expanded Universe, but that was changed when this canon made the Jedi birthplace Ahch-2. At a minimum, a trip to Tython is going to dive really deep into Jedi history and culture more than ever before, but it could also give Grogu a full-on purpose and possibly bring other well-known characters into the mix to help train him. And of course, we see at the end the title card. This episode was directed by the genius man himself, Dave Filoni. Awesome prequel ties, even more awesome Rebels and Clone Wars threads being tugged on, and I can't believe we only have three episodes left in the Mandalorian Season 2. What Easter eggs and references did you catch in The Mandalorian Chapter 13? Share your thoughts in the comments section or send them my way on Instagram at Brandon Davis BD and head over to comicbook.com slash Star Wars for more updates. I'm BD. I'll see you there.